of support. Curtis Fleming is there on the edge of the air. Fleming for That's Craig it. Hignett. Hit it, Higgy. Higgy hits the track. Oh! Abanelli coming alive again. Janino wants the ball played to him. Abanelli spots out. Hello and welcome to the Board Breakdown Podcast with me, Johnny and Dana. Uh, we're the Board Podcast that gives you all your Board Match Day chat in a podcast. And this show, it's on Matt Crooks. And he's left the building. Our tree has departed. He's, you know, he's just, I can't talk. He's just gone. I'm so upset. Uh, Dana, you know, it all started last week. I know we, we've been really upset about it, but Michael Carrick announced that uh, Matt Crooks went, has, has went to Real Salt Lake. It was announced um, just this week, of course, but two and a half years spell on side. He's gone for a million pounds. We've signed we signed him for a million pounds and also rather supposedly have a 20% sell-on clause for Crooksy. But he did leave us a, a nice note then, which I think it's only right that you read out, uh, given <laughs> your 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 half <laughs> you have a love for the tree. <laughs> yeah, and my tears fell onto my phone screen when I was reading this. It was written in true Crooksy fashion. He said, when first joining, I remember saying it's Middlesbrough and I haven't been disappointed. What a club. Only six months ago, I described this place as home and that will remain. But life is short and we only get one go at it. And to have the chance to experience football and life in another country with my family was one I was keen to take up. From the very first game, playing as a tricky right winger at Fulham away, right up to Chelsea in a domestic semi-final. I gave it my all. Under each manager came different challenges and plenty of positions, yet all provided me with memories which I'm sure I'll be able to look back on fondly. Reading at home, United away, Spurs at home, Chelsea at home. Fantastic. Good luck to everyone involved at, uh, with the club for the rest of the season. I'm sure the lads and the staff will give everything till the season ends. He also says, aside from the football, I must place thanks to you all who have supported the Jordan Senate Foundation Trust from the minute I arrived. We've been able to raise incredible amounts of money together and I hope you continue to keep an eye on what we do. <laughs> this is the bit that got me. He goes, hair is fine. Can't question it. Belters all the time. Not sure. Up the borough tree, and it's funny actually well, because you only scored one belter for us, which was actually his, I think, second goal for us against QPR. That's the only belter that Matt Crooks ever scored for Millsborough Football Club. So, rest in peace, or Carrick's head. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just gonna say, rest in peace, uh, Crooks. He's out, it's a bit harsh. Um, <laughs> but I was gonna say, he just probably left him there, haven't you? But that's right away. But I'm well done for getting through it because I know it's been an emotional uh couple of days for you. So. How are, you, how are you feeling then? I'm, I'm obviously deep down, you're not that bothered, but you're a bit upset when you're a bit upset when he. Uh, when I he am left, bothered. Right? I am highly bothered. Um, I'm gonna hold a vigil for my Matt Crooks cutout. He's not going on the tree anymore because he's gone. Mm. I'd say he's he's leaving. But yeah, I was. You know what? I was gutted because with Crooks, like he was my favorite Borough player of this squad, and to be honest. The requirements for a favourite Borough player, they don't have to be the best footballer. They just have to be really likeable. And I think that Crooks was effective. You know, I can't say that he didn't have any footballing ability because he did. And we'll get on to what type of player he was for Borough soon. But as a person as well, his off-field persona, his charitable efforts as well for the Jordan Senate Foundation, raising awareness for, for epilepsy and um, British Sign Language, he was just a very, very likeable footballer and person and so I am gutted I still actually think he could have provided Borough with a, an impact to end the season because he was on track for having his best season in terms of goals and assists so you can't say that Matt Crooks wasn't a successful signing for us and I would even leap to the the degree of saying that he's probably one of the best signings that Borough have made in recent years in terms of when he came in, I honestly thought that he would probably last at Borough as long as Neil Warnock did because I just thought he was the the Neil, Neil Warnock, Warnock signing. signing. <laughs> yeah, like when I looked at him towering over Warnock in uh, was it Plymouth? Yeah, it was Plymouth, was it or Cornwall for preseason? I thought, God, this is such a Warnock signing, and actually he outlasted Warnock at, at Borough and then some, and really carved a good career for himself at this football club, and will go down undoubtedly 
as a, a cult hero. So I'm gutted, but there's also the acceptance there that it probably was time and it's a different opportunity for him to go to the States and experience a different different type of lifestyle, essentially. So gutted, but yeah, kind of accepting of of the end. Yeah, and look, I think like this move had to happen now, really. I think with the it couldn't have waited to the summer, obviously, because MLS season um is halfway through at that point. And you know, for me, it's a it's, I think it's a good move for, for him more more than anything. I think you know, if you get the fan, fan reactions as well from Borough fans, Danny Bemo says it's the right time, but a good squad player and great human. Matt says uh you need players like him and the team, create a sense of community, whether or not his on-field performance is much the criteria, he will certainly be missed. And then Craig says as well, for the effort he's put in, but he seems generally a nice guy too, um, but he's got to do what's best for him and his family. And you know what? I agree um, with all of it, to be honest. I think it's just the right move for him. Um, but also, I feel like you do need um, players like him in the dressing room, I think, you know, that, that camaraderie, someone who's a good leader, um, and also like a player who, for me, was just effective in moments. And I, it always felt like when we had it, when we needed a goal and Crooks was on the pitch, it always felt like Crooksy was going to score it. And mm. it, don't know, it was always, it was always like that, but he just seemed to be in the right place at the right time. And sometimes you can't really teach that. And he's, for me, it's, it's going to be a miss. And you know where Borough are now in terms of squad building. You know, I think we're fortunate we do have options when people are fit, but obviously we do have a few injuries at the moment. So, again, it's going to be a bit of a miss, especially now, you know, when we've we've not really played with a striker over the, the last couple of games. And Crooksy could have helped uh, fill that void for now. But, Dan, what, 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 if, if, if you're a, a real Salt Lake fan and you're watching this right now and thinking, God, these two are fantastic. Um, apart from that, <laughs> what player <laughs> are, are they getting um, in the MLS? Well, I mean, Crooks is six foot three, so you wouldn't be blamed for thinking you he's your. Him. Yeah, yeah, he's the archetypal flick on happy merchant, or you know, he's a prehistoric manager's wet dream. But I think to pigeonhole him as that would probably be doing him a bit of a disservice because he's a far better footballer than people give him credit for, even still to this day. Um, you know, some of his chance creation for Borough over the years has been of really high quality. To be honest, I'm thinking his no look assist for. Uh, Duncan Watmore's goal in was that Chris Wilder's first game Huddersfield away really really good assist and then uh, a no, another no look pass actually a reverse ball through for Akpom's goal away at Birmingham he had set up Riley McGree wonderfully yeah. with a low cross against Cardiff and waited a perfectly placed ball for Cameron Archer over the top against Luton last season and you know at times he can be a little bit clunky and sometimes he does look every bit at all fellow playing outfield um, yeah. And of course, he isn't the quickest, but I've always appreciated his his creative craft and his awareness for for his teammates has always been really, really good, which has led to those really high quality moments in terms of chance creation. And he actually has a poacher's instinct as well to, you know, if you get the ball into the box, Matt Crooks really comes alive. And I think we missed him actually against Bristol City because of that. Not to mention, actually, he had his best goal scoring record against Bristol City with five goals in seven appearances against them but yeah he just comes alive in the box and he, he loves a, a goal mouth goal does Crooks so I think you're getting someone that yeah, you know don't look at his frame and his build and think that he is the type of player that is going to be really good in the air because to be honest he's not that type of player he's really good with the ball at his feet um better than people give him credit for um although he does have his moments where of course as i mentioned there he's a little bit clunk clunky but i think that he was an absolute dream for us to be honest um in terms of basically the the, the money that we spent on him the fact he came from rotherham he did such a good job for us over the years and, and i'm gonna miss him a lot yeah and you know i think he's, he's a player i think more fans will naturally miss because you know he's he's becoming or he pretty much was near a fan favorite you know i, I would yeah, say we, uh, not not probably because of his technical ability i think it's more or less i think just that like you were saying at the start of the, the the show he was just very warming and i think it was very reflective on, on side, and people could just generally see a, a good person and, and you know in footballers as well like i felt they should do more stuff like this put themselves out in the limelight you know, we get to know them more on and off the pitch because it just helps 
I think, build that connection with fans a lot more. I think he did that really well. And you know what? He's played over 115 appearances now. Uh, well, it did for, for Borough with 23 goals and 15 assists. Um, and, you know, what, there's one highlight for me, which I always uh, love about Cruxy, and it's, just, it's the goal at Man United, um, you know, where it, where the ref just goes. And it's VAR. I don't know what more. It's clear handball. And they go, you mm. know, they're going to give this. It's not going to It's not going to count. And then they're like, well, it is. And then, like, he just <laughs> runs off and, and celebrates. So it's, it's brilliant. I, I think it's a brilliant think... moment. I didn't think that was going to be given, so I, I can't put that down as my favourite, you know, because I didn't even celebrate it. And I think the Borough fans would be in the same boat as well, some of them, whereby they also didn't celebrate it because they thought, surely it's going to be disallowed. I mean, what a stupid rule it is, but we benefited from it, so who cares? Yeah, well, what's what's your favourite moment then, uh, Dana, from uh, Bot Bot the Tree? I think probably Reading at home when we were 1-0 down and Reading, to their credit, I know that they were struggling that season, but I think they defended pretty well. It's just that they tired and then they got deeper and deeper and Jones stepped on them and I think he started to assert his dominance on the game and then Crooks obviously scored two goals to turn the game around. And that winner in particular, if you watch the game back and the highlights, you can see the camera pans over to, to Red Faction in the South Stand and it is it goes nuts. It really does. The camera's shaking all over the place because of just how transcendent that moment was. And after that game, he came out. Red Faction was still in the South Stand for a period after the match. He came out and, you know, he was, um, I think he was basically doing the, the little choreo to, um, or Wilder said as it was back then and celebrating with the fans. I think that just strengthens the connection between a, a player but not just a player and, and the fans, but a team and the fans, because the team, sorry, the fans know that they've got a player like Crooks that just gets it. And I think that he absolutely did just get it. So, yeah, I, I think that. And also a shout out to the video diaries as well. It's funny that he was saying to Stefan, let's play okay. soccer, man. And now he's going to play soccer himself over well, in the MLS. Well, they're both in the MLS now, aren't they? Yeah, um, they are, you know, yeah. yeah, Stefan's at the oh, Colorado. So tell you what. It's such a shame that he's not playing for Portland Timbers. But why? Oh, because the tree. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they, they yeah. have. Uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure when they score, they chop a tree. They're part of a tree down. I'm pretty sure that I saw that at some point. Yeah. yeah well, they might. They might try and run on the pitch and get him. Um, <laughs> they're not going to chop Crutzy down. <laughs> yeah, chop Crutzy <laughs> down. Um, I think. I think kind of like. It, some of them up really. I think if if it was like one word to describe Crooksy, I would probably say tremendous, just because he was. Oh god! Um, <laughs> uh, I think it was. Uh, it was, but he was a great signing for us. And I think you know, if if you rate the sign out of five for what he did and what he brought, you definitely put him put up in like the four out of five. I would say category, and like not as in terms of like super effective, constantly scoring goals, but I think it was just a really good signing for what we needed then. How he's progressed on different managers. And right now, it just felt like the right time probably for him to go. I was expecting him to probably go this summer, probably more than anything. I think he was linked with Ipswich. I think he was very close to joining Ipswich um, and didn't. So I think the right was always on the wall, I think, with, with Crooksy in the end. But he has gone. But then if you could sum up uh, Crooksy in a word, what would it be? Probably incomparable. I think he's a the rare word. type of player. Yeah, he's, he's such a rare player. And, and if we get someone of his ilk again, in terms of the whole package on and off the pitch, then I think we'll be very lucky. Yeah, and you know what? I think we're going to have to change, obviously, all Carrick said, if, we, if we're going to continue with it. Maybe Hayden Hackney's hair is fine, I don't know. Like He's got he's got <laughs> fine hair. And, and you know what? He, he, scored a couple, and he scored a couple of bellers as well as Hayden Hackney, so maybe it all aligns. But then I, I think it's only right we end this show with something that we put together uh, a few, probably last year, I think it was last year. <laughs> no, it was um, the year before, we, I think. Oh, yeah, before we were being delirious uh, in our messenger <laughs> chat. Um, this is crazy little thing called Crooks. Hey, it's Matt Crooks. And they just can't handle him. It's Matt Crooks. He's six foot three and we call him the tree. Hey, ready? Crazy little thing called.